In this demo, I want to show you how to use the track changes capability in Microsoft Graph. This capability, also called Delta Query, is going to enable applications to get a list of all the items that have been added, updated, or deleted since the last time the same query was issued. I'm then going to implement track changes with the existing change notifications code to create a responsive application that only sends requests to Microsoft Graph when, change, when entities change um, and only when and it's only going to retrieve those entities that have changed. This process is going to result in many fewer requests uh, to Microsoft Graph, and it's going to also receive a much smaller payload from Microsoft Graph, which makes it much more performant and has a much uh, better chance of avoiding any throttling issues. And this is all dependent upon the fact that I've created the Azure AD app and the .NET console app or the .NET um, web API uh, in the previous demos. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start with our notifications controller class, and I want to add uh, a bunch of code to this. So I'm going to scroll up and we're going to add in a bunch of code right after our check subscriptions. So let me explain what this does. This code is uh, includes this new method called check for updates. All right. So what does check for updates do? This is going to call Microsoft Graph using the Delta uh, URL, and then it's going to page through all the results until it finds a new Delta link. So you can see here that we're going to go get all the users. It's going to write all the users to the screen, and then as well, it's going to output the users and then walk through all the pages of data. And then ultimately, at the very end, it's going to when it gets to the last page, it's going to look for a Delta link that you see right here. It stores this URL in memory until the code is notified again when another notification has been triggered. So let's go find our existing post method so that we can, we can leverage this. So we have our notifications, there's the renew subscription, there's the get, and then here's our post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in this method, a method call here, um, after we've received the notification to do a check for updates. So it checks to see have there been any, have there been any updates. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and save my changes. And then we can go ahead and start running our app. So I'm going to go do run and start debug. So this is again going to spin up my app. Okay, so now everything is running. So what I want to do is let's go back to the browser and let's go create a new notification for our new, our new subscription to be notified of things. So I'll go ahead and refresh that. So there we go, we have a new subscription ID that's been created. Now let's go over to our admin center and on my active users, I'm gonna go update a user, another user. So we'll go to Adele Vance and we'll update her mobile phone again. So scroll down. She now has all ones for her mobile phone. The last section, I'm gonna change that, or her office phone, I'm gonna change that to a bunch of twos. And save changes. Okay, so now everything has been saved. So now let's go back to our application. And while we're waiting for another uh, request to come in, because these notifications can take a minute for them to show up, let's go back and let's actually modify another user. So we'll also uh, go to Alex and we will modify his contact information to add a bunch of ones for his office phone as well. And we'll also do the same, we'll give him a mobile phone as well and we'll save those changes. All right, now let's go back to our app. And so now what we're doing is we're simply waiting for our notification to show up. Once we get the notification from Microsoft Graph, our check for updates is then going to go make a request to Microsoft Graph and say, give me a list of all the changes that have happened since the last time I made this request. Okay, so what you just saw here that we just ran by and we saw those notifications is that the first time it got a notification, it went and listed out all of the users um, that, were, uh, that are in our app. So notice here, I've got two change notifications that showed up for the two users we modified, and then it displayed a list of all the people uh, in, our, uh, in our organization. So now let's go back to the browser and let's go make another change. So we're gonna change their phone numbers now to have a bunch of twos on the end. We'll do the same thing for Alex, a bunch of twos. And now let's go to another user. We'll go back to Adele. And we're gonna go modify her phone number again. We'll add a bunch of threes to her office phone and save our changes. 
Now what that'll do is that'll trigger another notification, but you'll see that this next time it triggers the notification, we're only, and it fetches all the users, it's only gonna get the users that have changed. So we're gonna see a much smaller list of uh, users get displayed. We should only see two users, one or two, depending on when the notification comes in. So here what you can see is that we have another request that came in. So we've got our notifications that came in and it looks, well, it looks like a couple users were actually uh, got modified uh, behind us. So um, we can see that the two changes we made to Adele Vance and to Alex Wilbur, those were picked up. We have a couple other ones that were also picked up. It looks like somebody else was making uh, the same similar changes at the same time. But in this case here, what you saw is we were using the Delta query to only show me the number of results or uh, of thing of users that have changed since the last time I issued this initial query. So you learn how to track the, how the track changes capability in Microsoft Graph works in this demo um, that is also called Delta Query. You can implement track changes with the existing change notification code to create a responsive application that only sends requests to Microsoft Graph when entities change and only when retrieves those entities that have changed. This process is gonna result in a lot fewer requests to Microsoft Graph and receives smaller payloads from Microsoft Graph, making it a much more performant application. Thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something. Now remember that this video is part of a series of videos on this Microsoft Learning module. This video is also part of a playlist that includes all the videos that are associated with this module so that you can watch them in order. The playlist and all its included videos are associated with a Microsoft Learning module that includes hands-on lab exercises and additional resources. Check the notes for this video and the associated playlist for more information and where to find the Microsoft Learning module.